going? My name is Matt Como. I'm a director and filmmaker, and today we are here with Lens Distortions to showcase their high-end visual effects to demonstrate not only how easy they are to use, but how they can also help take your film to the next level. The great part about these sleek and textured effects is that they are curated and compiled into libraries. As you can see here from the ones I've imported into my project, each library is broken up into different categories. For example, under the Maven pack, we have quick, bold, textured, and a few others. This is great because as an editor, you can get a sense of what the effect is at a quick glance. There's so many different options to choose from. Whether you need something vivid and assertive, or soft and deliberately understated, there is something for you. So let's get into the sequence to see how I use these in my videos. I like to say that sometimes the best effects are hiding in plain sight, which is evident in this sequence. The idea as a filmmaker is that you want to use light in an intentional way which helps create the cinematic feel. So let's take a look here. Diving into the intro, you can see that the sequence is built from multiple elements from the library. Using both a combination of their Maven effects in tandem with the dust element, we are able to create the intro you see here. Layering these are pretty straightforward. Drag and drop your effect into the timeline. From here, if the effect sits above another piece of your timeline, set the blend mode to screen. Diving back to the main sequence, you can see that I nested the composition, leaving the tail end of the effect to trail into the first shot. What this does is give a sense of continuity in the project. Even though it's a hard cut, the flow is seamless because of the effect. Moving forward, I like to use flares on top of two shots to act as a stylized transition. For this, I like to use Classic Light Hits 4K, and for this one in particular, CL Quick 1. Once again, this is as simple as a drag and drop, plus changing the blend mode to screen. In this next part, I'm going to show you a bit more of an advanced method on how I like to tailor these effects to my project. First and foremost, you can utilize masks in Premiere or After Effects to finesse every tiny detail to fit your shot perfectly. It's important to use light in an intentional way, so for this shot, I'm looking up to the sky, which means it's natural that the motivation of light would come from where I'm looking. From here, we drag and drop Subtle 5 onto the shot and apply a circular mask to give the flare an authentic drop off. Combine that with the curves adjustment and the flare begins to become a natural part of the scene. Next, let's look at the glare on my eye. The beauty of film always lies in the tiniest of details. For this, I used a luminary effect because I liked the organic movement and characteristic of the flare. I scaled the flare to cover the size of my eye, then I applied a corner pin distortion adjustment to round out the effect in order for it to naturally follow the contour of my retina. In addition, I applied another circular mask on it to seamlessly be integrated onto the shot. Moments later, another luminary effect appears. In reality, it's the exact same adjustment as before, except it slipped horizontally back to the way it was and reversed in order for it to feel different. The point I want to drive home with this tutorial is that there truly are limitless ways to use these effects. With a little bit of thought and creativity, you can easily take your visuals to the next level. Take a look at this next shot. By simply adding Luminary 50 on the image and masking out my body, the glass effect immediately makes the shot much more interesting and engaging. Something I like to do a lot and that is also incredibly beneficial is changing the hue of the effect. By no means are you bound to the original colors from the library. You can see here when I turn the curves on and off, it begins as a vibrant blue, but with a little tweaking, the effect is able to blend in much easier. I mentioned this briefly before, but one of the most significant advantages these effects have on your project for me personally is that they can tie your sequence together by giving it a cohesive look. If you look closely, I chose to use the same effect twice here back to back on different shots to make the second shot feel like it's an extension of the first. Something to note here as well, because there isn't too much movement in this effect, I'm able to slow the clip down to fill the entirety of the shot beneath it. I do this a lot and recommend it on effects that don't have much movement to them. I also added some dust and fog to make the scene a bit more dramatic. The goal with this is to experiment, play around, and find something that works for you. These visual effect libraries are an investment, but because you can use them in such a variety of ways, they now have become an essential part of my filmmaking kit. I highly recommend you check them out. Once again, my name is Matt Como. Thank you for watching.